watch it in an app store. Meaning people wouldn't have to go to your website through a URL. What they will do is they will download your app from an app store. But you build that app as if it was a website. So you're short off getting the best of both worlds. The app stores do accept these uh, platforms, such as PhoneGap, for example. Uh, it was acquired by Adobe last year, so I'm, you know, I'm sure that is a big now, in my opinion. So there are apps today that use these. In fact, you don't need these. You know, uh, I've talked to a lot of people about these, and not a lot of people know that, for example, the first Facebook application was a hybrid. It was a hybrid, and today it continues to be a hybrid, even though they have moved a lot of stuff to be native. The first Facebook application had a container that was loading a web page that, it, that would look the same as if you went to Facebook on your mobile browser. But they wrapped it in a container without using anything like these, phone gap or anything. The platforms themselves have the option for you to embed a website into an app or load web content into an app. So what, that's what they did. They created this wrapper and built everything in HTML, <clears throat> which meant they could maintain it very easily alongside their mobile application as opposed to having to maintain a um, application altogether. And that means that if I, for example, have, if I'm Facebook and I have my Android application, my iPhone application, and I want to change some functionality, I only change the actual file that's being loaded into those applications. I don't have to change the applications themselves because they're just containers. They're just pulling something that is all a universal language. So the app stores do accept it, and you know, of course, Apple, there's, there are no restrictions on uh, Google Play, the Android app store, but Apple for sure accepts these provided they meet the guidelines that they have set before for any, any applications, any applications whether native or uh, hybrid. <clears throat> PhoneGap is one of them, and one, again, in my opinion, one of the most powerful ones now because it was um, part of the, it, it, was, it used to be Apache Cordova, and it, and it still is Apache Cordova, and, and it's a, so an open source uh, framework, but uh, Adobe has bought it and created a proprietary sort of version out of it, still within the open source uh, licensing. So they're going to, they're adding a lot of, you know, power to it, making it a great tool. Titanium Accelerator, Accelerator is another one that works very similar, not the same way you, your developer will code the application in a way and it'll translate that code that's universal, again, HTML, JavaScript, that a lot of people know and a lot of developers work with, it'll translate it into native code and make native applications out of that. So the concept is the same, but the approach is different. The approach with uh, Titanium Accelerator is translating code, whereas with PhoneGap, the concept is actually being a mediator, interpreting code in real time. Give me a message, I'll translate it and tell you something else. Titanium will, trans will translate it in advance and just bake. For those of you who are uh, interested in developing games, there are two uh, great frameworks to do that cross-platform uh, the most revenue today. And for games, you know, there are another uh, set of implications to keep in mind because games require a lot of power. Uh, graphics, you know, of course, processing graphics, it requires a lot of power as well. So this approach may work for simple games, the, the actual wrapper and phone gap or titanium and using HTML. But if you're really into developing 3D games or games that require a lot of graphics, you're probably better off looking into Unity, which is 
yet another platform that allows you to build uh, immersive experiences and games much like in any other 3D application like you know 3D Studio Max or Cinema 4D but you can publish for desktop through a plugin unfortunately but for desktop and for mobile without having to force the user to download a plugin so you can create a game without in, in unity without even knowing how to build iPhone applications or uh, Android applications that is great for games not so much for any other kind of apps because it's all 3d so it'll be mostly games Corona is for you know uh, another set of games another category of games like your Angry Birds type game it has physics you know and it has you know collision and detections but nothing like a 3d environment like unity will do but uh, it does have some great functionality for games and of course it, it you know the, the point remains the same if you want to target multiple platforms and you want rapid prototyping and you want code that's easy to maintain and roll out new features uh, new uh, features then you know this is probably your best bet if you need to if you need to really leverage the power of the device and have some complex graphics going on or complex calculations going to do corona corona or unity i mean you know getting you know the most so let's say that i start my application i develop a great prototype uh, i'm sure that for what i need right now html is fine once i hit critical mass I won't be able to go native just by translating that. I have to start over again. Granted, if I'm already making millions, I'll be more than happy to do that. But I have to keep that in mind. I have to know that if I'm gonna launch with a set of features for my app, and I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to go native if I need to, and this is going to block me at some point and prevent me from my my end goal which is for example have an app that does filters but for now I'm just gonna create something that allows people to add their name so that I can do in HTML but if my long-term goal is to have something that won't be able to run on HTML there is no point in starting with something like these and saving some money now because in the end it's gonna cost me more so one size does not fit all that is you know kind of my mentality is not because I'm more comfortable with HTML or with Objective-C because it's just my language of preference do I have to force my clients to say yes um, let's just go with a hybrid app or let's just go with a native app I think that each project is different and with each application you have to look at what your long-term goals are and based on that make an educated decision which is why we're having this conversation today by the way because you're gonna be faced with these questions whether now or down the road if you have an idea for an app I mean we all have an idea for an app right I, I come across like three every day and every time I talk to someone they know that I develop stuff so they're like you wanna you, know, you wanna get rich I have this idea we're gonna change the world one app at a time and that happens to me like three times a week so we're all gonna face that at some point in our uh, career as entrepreneurs building apps we're gonna have to make a decision and it has to be an educated one it is not based on what your developer wants to tell you